It can be a very emotional issue, science and technology, to double the food production of this planet in the next 40 years. Some people have called it Frankenfood, a term I believe that was first used by, or an early use by Prince Charles. And of course, uh, there's an image that uh, passes around the public now a great deal about these unnatural um, uh, constructions that scientists are giving us. But some people, of course, are going to first say, okay, we have to double the uh, food production by 2050. Why not just clear some more land and uh, get more fields? Is that, is that an option, Pat? It's not really an option for a couple of reasons. One, most of the arable land has already been farmed and the little bit of land left, uh, we don't want to clear because it's home to tremendous biodiversity, to forests. Um, burning down forests contributes to global warming. There's increasing strains on water supplies. So in the last 50 years, there's fourfold less fresh water available per person. So we no longer have that option of just increasing the land and planting more food. So we do need to become much more productive, and that involves both, um, you know, of course, uh, social and economic uh, support, infrastructures, markets, but it also increasingly means uh, improved seeds to farmers and agroecological farming practices. Around the rest of the world, Monty, more land available over there in any way that... Uh or, or is it really a matter there, too, of trying to double the yield of the land you've already got? We think of the big, open, empty desert that we see on our maps. Yeah, that's right. We do have desert areas, the Sahara Desert, the Kalahari Desert. But Africa is quite a big continent. It's the second largest uh, uh, region of the world. You know? And um, we do have bad areas, uh, but we also have good areas for cultivation. And if you look at the land that have been used for cultivation so far, I believe that in another 10, 20 years, Africa will have more arable land than any other region of the world. Yes, it's true. Despite the uh, Sahara Desert and the Kalahari Desert, we believe that there are areas that we could call um, breadbasket areas, many such areas, you know, and. Um, uh, and, and these areas need to be brought to cultivation, but, but we have to be very careful. There is need for us to increase production per unit area, not increase, not increase production through expanding the area under cultivation. You know, and, and so we need to watch that very closely so that at least we conserve our ecology. Louise, you were... Well, expansion of land area... To to do agriculture has been the traditional way all through human history 10,000 years ago when we invented agriculture um, to actually produce food. There is still a bit of land left and actually one part, where, one continent where this is the case is in Africa, particularly because in Africa you also have some major lakes and rivers that are actually not being used for uh, irrigation. Only 4% of sub-Saharan Africa ar agricultural land is actually being irrigated. In China it's more than 35%. So there is a tremendous scope. However, as Pam said, we do not want to touch all of the land that's not under cultivation, not only for biodiversity, but because there are very good reasons why that land is not being used. It's too cold, too steep, too shallow, the soils are too acid, and there is no infrastructure. The overall principle has to be that we have to increase in a sustainable manner the productivity of the land that is currently already under agriculture.